Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Are you enjoying yourself? Let's give O'Reilly and all your speakers a big round of applause. This has been so much fun so far. And we're only getting started, right? So, um, as we said, my name is Scott Davis. Um, my first book for O'Reilly was, in fact, uh, J Boss at Work. That was over 15 years ago. That was back when it was J2EE. There was a two in that letter. And it's interesting because all of my books since then on Groovy and Grails and Google Maps and now HTML5 on smart TVs and, and mobile phones on smartphones. Um, my 30-year career has almost exclusively been in web development. This is a technology and a platform I deeply, deeply love and respect. Now, how many of you have a smartphone in your pocket right now? Show of hands. Wonderful, wonderful. How many of you have on that smartphone on silent or vibrate right now? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. How many of you have a hearing disability or a hearing impairment? Curious. Curious. Now, how many of you have ever pinched or swiped on your phone, stretched to make your text bigger or smaller? Show of hands, yes. And how many of you have low vision or a sight impairment? Fascinating. I know that these features are available to us under the accessibility menu, but they sound not like accessibility features, but they sound just like features to me. And so that's what I want to talk about here today, accessibility. Now, if you look it up in a dictionary, I love this definition of accessibility because it applies to what we do here, web development. Accessibility is the quality of being able to be reached or found. It's the quality of being able to be easy to use. It's the quality of being easy to understand. These are all things that we strive to do as web developers, right? And yet in this definition, disability doesn't show up anywhere. Fascinating. Fascinating. Because if you plug web accessibility into your favorite search engine of choice, all of a sudden, disability comes up all over the place. Now, disability isn't something we should ignore. I definitely want to appeal to the altruistic, your core humanity, to help people out. But it's really interesting that if we tie disability to accessibility, it opens the door for all kinds of excuses, doesn't it? Well, I want my website to be accessible, of course, but oh, we don't have the time or the funding or the expertise. And by the way, I mean, do we really, do we really need it? It's interesting. Did you know that 20% of the world has some form of disability? If you have a form of disability, any disability at all, it makes you a part, a member of the largest minority in the world. And yet we say, ah, it's only 20%, right? We've got lots of users, lots of customers. It's interesting because as I talk to clients about conversational UIs, they say, oh, yes, we want Siri, we want Alexa, we want Microsoft Cortana. And I say, yeah, we want accessibility too, right? And they say, no, no, really, we're just interested in Siri and Alexa and Cortana. It's interesting how we kind of compartmentalize this. But whether we're talking about vibrate on your phone or pinching or stretching or these conversational UIs, while nominally these are accessibility features, I would argue they're just features. Features that we expect to be in any one of our websites. And really what I'm talking about here is this idea called universal design. Now universal design is something that we have shamelessly stolen from the brick and mortar world, from the physical world that we live in. But this idea is we should be building things out that everyone can use. That's not particularly controversial or revolutionary, I don't think. So when I look at a door like this, I can walk right in without even thinking about the three stairs it takes to get up to the door, or the lack of the handrails, 
or the narrow door frames or the lack of a button to open them up automatically. This is totally accessible to me, but it's not accessible to a large number of people. And I don't know if you can tell in this picture, do you see that tiny blue square in the lower right-hand corner that says, oh yeah, there's our accessible entrance over there. This is the meat space equivalent of this door is best viewed in Internet Explorer. <laughs> so when you look at another example of a door still on Colorado University campus, we see all of a sudden, oh, this is interesting. Aren't stairs to get into that door? Wider door frames so more people can get through. A button to automatically open that. And this is a great first step, but this isn't as far as you could go. This isn't even truly universal design. For something like true universal design, I look to my grocery store in Denver, Colorado. This is literally the entrance to my grocery store. A giant hole in the wall. Now, not the store, right? I love the store, that's not my point, but they literally have a hole in the wall. This is wide enough for people with grocery starts, gro grocery carts to walk through. It's wide enough for parents with children in strollers to walk through. And yes, it's wide enough for people with a mobility impairment to get in in a wheelchair or a walker as well. Does this feel anything but normal? Does this feel anything but natural? This is universal design right here, an entrance that everyone can participate in. Now what's interesting is while grocery stores tend to be a real paragon of accessibility in the brick and mortar space, we're seeing lawsuits now. This just happened last year, Winn-Dixie, a grocery store chain in the South, was sued under the American with Disabilities Act, not for their brick and mortars, but for their website. And this isn't to single out Winn-Dixie alone. In 2017, there were over 800 lawsuits brought against popular websites under the American with Disabilities Act. This is the world we're living in right now. We have expectations that the web should be just as accessible to all of us as our grocery stores are. So we're here talking about web development. And I've been in the industry for almost 30 years at this point. This is how I got my start doing web development. This is how I got my start viewing web pages. 101 keys and a mouse. I have to tell my developers and my clients over and over again that we're in a different era right now. This is what we use to create websites, but this is what the vast majority of your users do not use. Starting in 2015, the majority of internet traffic, the majority of web traffic was mobile worldwide, not desktop worldwide. It's amazing to think that the iPhone came out over 10 years ago, and we've been coming to conferences like this talking about responsive web design, talking about making these websites look good on your iPhones and your Androids and your Windows phones, and yes, even your Blackberries if you've been in this industry long enough. But what we find is still today, I come to clients and they say, yeah, we've got an MDOT website, or we've got a native app, and think about it, if over half of your users are coming to your website on a smartphone and they don't have a good mobile web experience, you are saying to them, this website is best viewed on a device with 101 keys and a mouse. And if you're not ready for your mobile website, look out because people are going to start accessing it on their wrists now, aren't they? or even purely conversationally. And this is where my clients, okay, slow down, Scott. Slow your roll just a little bit here. No one's really surfing the web on Alexa, are they? There's no keyboard, there's no mouse. Heck, there's not even any screen. I say, do me a favor. Say, hey, Alexa, 
Wikipedia Carrie Fisher, and all of a sudden Alexa starts reading this website to you. So in fact, yes, we are in an era where we are going to be using devices with no keyboard, no mouse, no screen to be surfing the web. We've been talking for a decade about responsive web design, making sure that your content flows like water through all the glass in your clients' lives. And while this is good, this is not good enough. Now we need to start making sure we are delighting all of our senses, not just our eyes. So it's been a long time since someone has said to me, oh, well, if I design for mobile, that's going to detract from my desktop user's experience. That's patently false at this point. And what's really interesting is the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, says that if you have a mobile-ready website, the Venn diagram between mobile users and users with disabilities overlaps significantly. If your website is already mobile-ready, you've gone such a long way towards making it accessible as well. Tim Berners-Lee, the father of the web, says the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone is an essential aspect. And it's not just Tim. Another Tim says that as well. Tim Cook at Apple. They say, we believe that technology should be accessible to everyone. And I love this turn of phrase. They say, we build our devices not for some of the people, or even most of the people. We build our devices for all of the people. Apple has won the Helen Keller Award for their accessibility. If you go to this website, there is a wonderful video. I encourage you to watch it. And it's not an aspirational video. It's a video talking in real terms about all the accessibility features that are simply baked in to iOS devices, to macOS devices, to watches and tablets. And it's not just Apple. Google has a deep, deep investment in this. I love web components, W3C web components. And if you read the Google tutorials on building W3C web components, they lead with accessibility. They say, we're building out these components that, of course, are accessible, as well as performant and maintainable and all that other good stuff. But they lead with accessibility. Microsoft, wow, what a turn they've made. Under Satya Nadella, it's almost an unrecognizable company. And they put accessibility and Bing text-to-speech web services and Microsoft Cortana, their conversational UI agent, in the forefront. This is truly where we're going in the next 10 years. Gartner says that over 30% of our interactions today happen through voice. And we've got to be prepared for that revolution. And the way we prepare that revolution is the way we've been preparing for the last decade. If your device is responsive, if your website allows the content to be enjoyed on not a particular piece of glass, but literally any piece of glass that your customer has in their hand, then you've gone a long way to making sure that you're not going to delight just one of their senses, but all of their senses. Because isn't that really why we're all here in the first place? If you design for accessibility, it improves not some of the people's experience, not most of the people's experience, but everyone's experience. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I appreciate it.